If you're new to the PC community or trying to get into it and gathering information or perhaps you've already built your first computer but want to understand more about your motherboard, this video could be very vital to you and I think it's very, very important that everyone understands the motherboard, where things go, and how certain things work, and how to shop for one. So this can help in many different ways. So we're going to take this from a very, very introductory standpoint, from a complete beginner's perspective that has never looked at a motherboard perhaps, and we're going to diagnose each part of the motherboard and explain what each part is doing. So let's get into that. Hey what's up guys, my name is JD from JD Tech here and welcome back to the channel where we discuss PC passion, reviews, guides, mods and more. So if you're into that sort of thing, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel. And before we get into today's video, I want to introduce a productivity software that often deals with PDF documents. And if you deal with PDF documents a lot, this can help you out actually quite a bit. So here's a message from our sponsor. PDF Element from Wondershare is the all-in-one solution for designing, editing, signing, and converting PDF files. PDF Element lets you easily edit and fill out PDF documents. Start from scratch or choose from the vast number of templates they have available from user agreements to job applications. Also, subscribe to their YouTube channel to get access to free invoice templates. Their YouTube channel is actually very useful and loaded with quick and to-the-point tutorials like converting different types of files, using an actual signature to electronically sign, and so on. You can start a free trial to see if it's the right solution for you. For more information, check the link in the description below. All right, so motherboard looks really busy. That's fine. We're just going to go through what we're looking at here and where things generally plug in and kind of understanding the anatomy of a motherboard. So this is where your CPU goes. All right, we're going to start at the very basic, very beginning, and we're going to work our way up into some more complex terms and stuff like that. But that's not without having a foundation of understanding before that. This is where your processor goes. This is where your memory goes or your RAM. These are called the DIMM slots. The DIMM slots pull open like with these little tabs. Sometimes they open on both sides. Sometimes they only open on one and you install your memory over here. The next thing is noticing that these are your PCIe slots. So for your graphics card, your sound card, your network card, maybe your SSD card, any sort of those things can be plugged into the PCIe slots. Now we'll notice that there's a longer one and a shorter one. Typically, let's say we have a graphics card. So that's typically associated with the PCIe slots. With your graphics card, you're going to use one of these larger ones. Now, typically, we want to install our graphics card on the topmost slot and not the lower slot. There's a lot of nitty gritty details that you can get into about why that is. But think of this as closest to the processor, so there's less of a travel time between the graphics card and your processor also to your memory and some of the other modules on the board another thing to notice is our m.2 slots over here so this is for ssd storage but this is for m.2 based ssd storage and if you have any questions about you know identifying what's on your motherboard it's usually labeled out on the pcb over here the pcb is just the board itself it stands for printed circuit board but basically if you have any questions, you can just always refer to that and find it in your manual and you'll know what it is. But this is for M.2 based SSD storage. It's pretty simple. And this over here are your SATA ports over here. Your SATA ports are usually identified by this L-shaped plug over here. And that's pretty easy to know. That's for your SATA based SSDs and hard drives. That's pretty simple. This board can support up to six drives in total, either SSD or hard drives. So that's where that goes. Other from that, we have a whole bunch of stuff over here, but usually not even half of this stuff is popular when building a computer. So you really don't have to worry about all of it unless you want to read the little labels on the PCB itself. And you can always do that. That's fine. But I'm only going to point out what we usually typically work with when building a computer. So over here, this is a USB 3 header. This comes from the front IO on the PC case. Uh, you can tell by USB 3 and you'll be able to match the plug and plug it in. If it doesn't plug in, it doesn't plug in. So that's always another way of identifying what goes where. Over here is a USB 3 TC, which means type C. That's also for your front IO from your PC case. This is also for your front IO connections for your HDD LED, power and reset buttons, and so on and so forth. Uh, here are some other channel fans over here. So this is channel fan one, channel fan two, and this is also channel fan three or W pump, which means for your water pump. Um, so this is compatible with water pumps, but you can use your channel fans for your water pumps as well over here. Um, so because they're all four pin connections, 
Uh, any of these four pin headers, yeah, these are called headers. Wherever we see pins coming out, we're just gonna call them headers. Wherever you see a four pin header, you can use for either a fan or uh, for a pump on an all-in-one liquid cooler, that's completely fine. If you want to plug in your CPU cooler fan on a channel header instead of your CPU fan, that's fine as well. Some boards have CPU fan one and CPU fan OPT, which means CPU fan optional, which gives you two separate plugs to plug in your CPU fan. So if you have one fan here and another fan there, obviously you would have separate control labeled in the BIOS. That's what it's gonna be labeled as. So it does the same thing, it's just labeled differently in the BIOS, and that's all that really matters. Over here, Captain White, we're gonna notice this is an RGB LED header over here, and a lot of the modern boards have this now. Um, some of the older ones do not, but it's also worth noting because uh, now we have a lot of RGB LEDs coming to the market like RGB LED strips and fans, so that's worth noting. Another important thing is that this is a 12 volt RGB header and not a 5 volt RGB header. 5 volt RGB headers are the latest and greatest in RGB connection, which means that you can individually address each RGB header, but you cannot plug in a 5 volt header into a 12 volt header or vice versa. Also, where you see the little 12V, the 12 volt, that means that's where you plug in the ground. The ground is labeled on the arrow for your RGB cable. So that's where you would plug it in. Um, over here, you have your HD audio. This also comes your front IO. So that's also worth noting. A lot of this other stuff is typically not usually used, but over here we have USB 2.0 headers over here. Over here is where your audio is all handled right over here. And usually we have a little shield in here. I'm not talking about the plastic over here. There's actually a built-in shield into the motherboard. You'll usually see like some line that goes down over here that usually is traced around in this region. And all that does is protect the audio from any sort of static or crosstalk that is coming from all the different components in the motherboard because this is an open component it's not sealed off so that does have crosstalk going on so having that shield is also nice anytime you see plastic over this part of the area that means that there's definitely a built-in shield for the audio we'll move on to audio in a second but also some of the plugs over here this is typically associated with your motherboard power connection that's a 24 pin connector and there's usually only one on most motherboards so this one over here in the top left hand corner is usually associated with your cpu power connection and that's typically just an 8 pin connection over there sometimes there'll be two in case you have a really hefty processor with a lot of cores but most of them use only a single 8 pin connection over here we have the rear io and this changes sometimes it's typically associated with some usb ports some sort of output like an HDMI or DVI and then ethernet and then the audio jacks over here. Uh, this is Wi-Fi. this is a neat little feature but this is not available on every board so that is very important to know. So this is usually the same. Some of the components on the back here like the Wi-Fi do change though. Now if your processor has integrated graphics, some don't, like some of the Ryzen chips don't have integrated graphics. So if you plugged in something here, you would not get anything outputted to the screen. So if you had a graphics card installed you would plug your HDMI cord or whatever cord you want into there to get something out onto the screen. This goes directly to your processor, not your graphics card, so that's important to notice. And this is your VRM, which pretty much means voltage regulator module. So voltage regulator module controls the power going to your processor and also to the rest of your modules on the motherboard itself. You have a V-core portion that goes to the processor and you have an SOC portion, which stands for a system on a chip, that goes to everything else like your chipset and your PCIe slots and everything else. So that's what you need to know. If you have a high-end processor and if you're trying to overclock, you want a lot of phases or a lot of these squares over here. If you're looking into a motherboard for overclocking, you want to make sure it has a good VRM and look for reviews that talk about the VRM and not what's just on the board. Also, we have heat sinks on the VRM, so that cools it. And one of the last things is the chipset. So the chipset you can think of as a different tier of motherboard. So let's use Intel, for example, the Coffee Lake 8th Gen processors. So there's Z370, B360, and H360, I believe. All that means is that there's different tiers. The Z370 being the highest tier, which allows you to overclock. The different tiers just give you different abilities and features between the motherboards and what you can do with them. Um, so if you don't have a Z370 board, you won't be able to overclock with the Intel chip. And for AMD boards, for Ryzen, you'll be able to overclock on all their boards except for the AB350. But for the B350 and the X370, you'll be able to do that no problem. So the chipset is what matters as well when you're looking into a board. And if you want overclocking or some of the features that's offered by the Z370 chipset, 
that specific tier of board, make sure you look into that before purchasing your board. So that's important. But this is what the chipset is. Sometimes there'll be screws on here and you can put an M.2 drive under here, but uh, you would know about that in the spec sheet and it would probably also be advertised if you can do that. This board does not have that. So that's everything on the motherboard as far as the anatomy goes. Pretty standard as far as what goes in where and how we identify different parts of the motherboard. You should be pretty comfortable about what's going on and hopefully it makes it look and feel a little bit more simpler. So let me know if you have any other questions about motherboards and if you want future explainer videos on any other sort of components and perhaps more in-depth conversations about motherboards like the VRM, the voltage regulator module, and overclocking because that's important in case you're shopping around for that and knowing which board to buy is an important decision and it's not just aesthetics and certain features. I mean, sure, those things play a part in it depending on the consumer that's buying it, but those things are not the only thing to make a motherboard a good motherboard. There's a lot more to it. So that's important to know and I want you guys to know that information. And if you wanna know that information from me, let me know down in the comments below. So if you guys like this type of video, consider checking out the rest of the channel and subscribing if you're new here. Also, if you wanna grab yourself some PC art or some t-shirts over here, a link will be in the description below to my store and also in the card over here. And if you want more explainer videos like this video, like I said before, just let me know down in the comments. I'm usually pretty active in the most recent video. So let me know guys and thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.